All right, now, that's what I'm looking for, crazy. Crazy log like that. That's gonna have some spalting in it, probably just the right amount. I like that just enough to give it that uh, those black lines. And she's curvy, but I'm gonna set it in the bench pretty much just like this. And I'll take my flat spots, flat cuts off of it. Ah, fingers, everything in the phone. Uh, so my it'll sit on the bench, and you imagine a flat cut across there. And I'll get two. My goal would be two, two boards that are two and a half inches thick. And then, call me even crazier, this piece right here, I got it sitting up here, but it'll go flat on the bench, kind of like that. Let's see if I can get it to sit down like that. You'll see in a little bit. But I got to present it what I'm thinking right there. So this will have a neat little spot. Now that may end up being that may end up being soft in there once I cut through it. And I may end up having to cut it off right here. But you know, little short benches like that with curbs, uh, they do well. I sell a lot of them. Uh, that section right there should have, if I want to do a long bench, that's two benches right there, two more down there, two down there. And for instance, when they're completely finished, the legs are a little expensive if you get the nice legs, so the H legs or the Z legs. Uh, they have a self-adjusting little tabs on the little feet on the bottom you can adjust uh, for floor differences or if the wood, you know, got a little bit of a twist over time, you can adjust it. Those run about $35, so you got your time and your board here, finishing it, sanding it, milling it, drying it, and then you got $30 by $35 after shipping, maybe close to $40 with a set of legs. But a bench like that alone, if it ends up being close to 11 inches, 10 inches wide, will bring $235 a piece. For the longer bench so you got 235 times two you got another one down there for be about 125 130 and if this one stays long right here which is not going to be as wide you see it's not as wide but uh that's another you know a couple hundred dollars so you got you know let's see just four you got about seven to eight hundred dollars worth of benches uh you can make out of that so you determine whether it would be worth your time. But I like doing it. I don't really care. I like to make money like the next guy. But I love building stuff like this. The crazier, the more I like it. What do you say? And drop your, your comments. Would you even attempt or even use something like this if you had a sawmill? Or you do you do this if you do have a sawmill? Is this the type of stuff that you are interested in doing? Am I crazy for doing stuff like this? You tell me. It seems to sell well uh, everywhere I go. So that kind of tells me in this area at least people like crazy. Alright, I got the little, the shortest of the maples on there. Hopefully this one won't roll off. I got to kind of lean it so the camera will get it. I've kind of got it on the flat plane at which I want to put it on. Uh, we were looking for natural live edges. Now whether this is going to be any good or not, I don't know. But we'll take our first cut where we want it and then we'll probably have to roll it over and spin it 180 this way so it sits against the stops and then we'll start cutting down from the other side see how much spalting is in it was well, it worth the effort or not i think it's going to have some good spalting not major spalting maybe not as much as i'd like but i'm not wasting a log so Making the best use of every bit of a tree we can.
we go. Now, a lot of times I go within an inch, say an inch of what I want, because I want to end up with some of these one inch wide boards uh, for doing crafts and stuff. You know, not necessarily cutting boards, but table, tabletop runners, stuff like that. Uh, home decor, you know. Um, so, I like to take that first cut to kind of see what the material is going to yield, whether it's punky or not. But I have that uh, polycrill from Preservation Solutions that is just perfect for this uh, when it's a little bit soft. And we'll use some of that, and I'll show you how well that does. But that's a nice, awesome looking piece. To me, you may say that's ugly. I don't know. Uh, I'm happy with it where I'm at as far as the, uh, the width goes for a bench. So if I could get this piece right here to go down enough to still hold it. Uh, to get me my two and a half, at least two and a half uh, inch cut. Oh yeah, I'm down three. So I'm gonna take my first bench cut off because I like it. It looks really nice. The spalting's gonna be more towards the outside. So in this case, I'm measuring and taking my material from the outside inward, whereas you would want the heart to be the, the better wood, but I'm looking for the spalting. So if I focused on just trying to use the heart wood, it wouldn't have as much spalting in it. So first bench coming up. <laughs> good that one's close we're not gonna go there today Maybe a little thicker than I need to um, on that for what it is. But you know, people like heavy duty benches, and when this maple dries, it's it's not heavy. It's not heavy at all. Um, let me put it up here without knocking you guys off the thing again. Every time I slam something down, the phone goes flying off. But that's kind of my bench, you know. Now this little section right here. Where this hole is I will uh, probably do some cutting and kind of cut cut I'll probably let me show you you can't see it if I'm holding it down at the bottom I'll probably cut part of this off and then do an epoxy fill here and I may even put something like uh, some walnuts in the hole 
so that you can see it in there, different tree nuts. And we'll cap it off, and it'll be like a little specially novelty thing uh, that you have on your bench. Hey, why not, you know? That's the fun of it. But this is just, just to the perfect spot, or to the perfect point, it's spalted perfect. Not too crazy, it's still nice and solid. It's just the way I like it. Now, this one's not going to be probably going to give us, it'll give us a wide one on top, but not really wide on the bottom. Uh, I probably should have, I probably should have gone maybe a half inch thinner, but I, that's a nice thickness right there that most people like. So, this is where we got to spin it around. This will stick back and hit the, uh, the saw when you're coming through. We'll spin around here. So it takes a stop. Now this is going to be like one of them ones where it's going to want to do this number. Uh, so uh, I should be able to get out here, but if I put the stop, there's a support right here. And there's another one there. So what's going to happen when it starts cutting, it's going to want to try to pull this and pull that end around. But if my stop, and I don't have my gloves on me, and that's poison ivy. Get that off of there. Uh, if the stop is further, and the log's further this way, it should hold it. Uh, I'll have to start off slow. Uh, and that should get me right over. See how it's coming away from it here? So I do a little torque on it. And what happens when I start cutting it, it might go that way just a teeny bit. But as soon as I come past center, it'll go back around and stop. So I put just enough pressure on this that it holds it. It's trying to push it that way. The blade's trying to pull it this way. So should be good enough to do that. And we want to be, we want to be at, let's see. Two and a half. Let me try something too. Since I got this little wedge here, if I can reach it, we'll put this little wedge on the stop right here. We'll stick it in there. Yeah, I think that might help. And if I cut right through that block, it won't hurt anything. I think that might be the ticket. But tell myself to try that. I got a bunch of little angle blocks here. Looking for a two and a half. Two and a half. I don't think I could get a one by out of that. Uh, I don't like that. Don't look like two and a half. Huh. Something. Let me get that. Something don't look right here, guys. I've been noticing the numbers don't seem to look right when I've been cutting it. That says two and a half. I think I'm going to go up one inch, cut it, and I may end up with a one inch board. So I'll go up, let's say, an inch and a quarter. And we'll try that right there. <laughs>
and that's a pretty that's the pretty stuff right there this is why I like these crazy curved curved boards people love them too they make great home decor uh, pieces I'm going to hang on to that and this piece right here fold it up you see how that came out so that's a nice neat looking bench uh, still going to have to do something with that corner there the uh be kind of like the same thing as this one if I turned it over and made this the bottom which I don't have to um, or I can make this the top and come in here and maybe cut that off or something or maybe not even cut it off just dig that out put some nuts or different type of nuts or something in there cool do a clear epoxy over it and it'd be kind of like unique would you guys like to have a bench like that in your home or whichever? Something neat like that? I think I I would like it. So now, now to the big funky log. There's this big old crooked one. And I'm going to try to cut it all in one piece. So let's uh, give you guys a stop a -roo and then I'll come back when I have it on the bench. All right, we're back. Sunday, I usually call it Sunday fun day, but it's not the gun range this time. We're having fun with uh, using uh, the mill, just making some crazy wonky uh, benches out of some spalty maple. So uh, those are coming out excellent, the first two. I love them, you know. Drop, drop a, a comment. I mean, is this the stuff that you would like? I mean, would you buy something like this? Would you want to create something like this? Now, this bench, I'm going to cut this one log really long. If I can cut it all in one piece and then cut it after, it's, it's just easier to try to manipulate two different pieces. So, uh, I think I can do it without an issue. And I think I have it. I think I can. I think I can. I think I have it where I want it. Um wouldn't mind rocking it up a little teeny bit um because i mean it's this is kind of like splitting the the two different because it's got the ends go down a little bit if i rolled it that way i might gain a little teeny bit here um let me grab this kit hook i think i can get it up i gotta put the stop back down so i can cut it before i get it wedged up there I gotta have those down a little bit. I want a bit of cut. Uh, yeah, tricky, tricky, tricky. Put these down to where I think they'll hold. But then I can still roll this without, without it going off the other side. So I think right, right there is a good happy medium. I generally just keep these little blocks, these little wedges around. They're handy for uh, chalking the boards up, or these crazy logs up. So, let's see if we get down to the next stop here. I think that'll hold it where we need to be. Alright, stay still. Hopefully it'll stay where we want it. Make sure you guys are still uh, in the picture. Looks like you might have got a little bit out. This log's a little longer, so let me move you to this side and see if you're going to get most of the log. Yeah, you get most of it that way. So, let's see how pretty this one is inside. quite a quite interest in there let's uh during the video i need to try to figure out how to make some pictures for the opener for the uh the video to kind of explain what i'm doing and i think this would be a good photo opportunity right here 
I think that it uh that right there would explain it all. So I think that'd make a good uh picture for the uh dialogue of starting this video. So we'll just uh sneak a picture out of that while I'm doing the editing. And that will be the the opening picture. What do you think about that? Because I think that pretty much says it all. <laughs> all right, let's see. I want about eight inches or so as a wide spot. So if I do nine and then do an inch, down from there, it should give us a nice spot. <laughs> in the engine they don't run too good without gas I find but hold on alright we're back up and running now gas does help board but 
there's some beauty hidden inside there and that's what I'm looking for now this piece wouldn't be used as 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 it is I mean nobody's gonna use it this long unless you got an awful big table I guess that'd be one heck of a table runner wouldn't it so uh, I'll end up cutting it I say it's just easier if I can get a flat spot on this and cut this hole that I think it's going to be cut somewhere it can get cut somewhere right here so you have a bench here a bench here now the thought is it's really tapered off it had a belly in it um, I think on this one I'm not going to be able to get two like I did on that one I'm going to get one right in the middle and then maybe some one inch boards on the other side of it because uh, I don't know it could uh, be deceiving but I know I can't put this down enough because I don't think I can um, to get my two and a half inches out of it without the log moving too much. It stays on, if I can keep it on plane, I can do that. Uh, I can always take a real quick skim cut. Let's see, tape measure, tape measure. Eh, three and a quarter. And I think that one will hold it. This is the one that tapers off a lot. So I think I'm not even touching the board now. Um, but I'm down three. So if I can get this thing to slide, but not rotate, which I think it did. Like I say, I can always take a skip cut. I'm at three. Just a little bit more to make sure. I think it stayed on plane. I think we're good. Um, good enough because when this stuff dries, it's going to change. I always end up bringing it back and having to, you know, get a nice flat spot on one side. And then I run the rest through the planer. And this is a perfect size tree. It'll go through my planers. So, that's the... Uh, that's what they call a win-win, right? A win-win. Two wins, all in one. And I like the bark coming out. I mean, this is just perfectly, this sat in the woods just the perfect right amount of time. So where the bark is coming off nice, there's just enough spalting in it where it's not super crazy spalting. There's like hints here and there. What you don't want is like the edges, this to be too soft. You want to be able to sand it and it have a nice edge. Now, of course, we have the polycrill uh, from Preservation Solutions, and that is exactly what that is for, is for doing spalty wood. So what I would do is just go ahead and paint the whole edges. I'd probably just mix it up and just do the whole board and let it soak in and just make a nice, nice piece of material uh, for doing woodworking. Now, retighten this up. <sighs> Make sure that's there. I'll double check it real quick and let the blade just run over it to see where we're at. These are fun projects right here to me. I love this. That's bark off of there. Anytime I've got to cut through the bark, I save the blade. Put that right there, kind of see the shades. The shades the angle just a slight bit, but not enough to not enough to worry about.
might be able to get one more out of that. I'm going to have to spin it around. But man, this stuff is a little bit of bug holes right in here. Got even got a little buggy in there, but that's doing the doing its job. What it's supposed to be doing, giving me that look. And what's also surprising is the ambrosia in this tree is not real heavy. Spalting and heavy ambrosia can be a little too much. Um, I like it when these uh, the spalting or the ambrosia is kind of a little bit, but not a lot uh, when I want the spalting. So this is actually a hard maple and didn't have a lot of ambrosia in it. So let me grab you guys real quick and I'll give you a flyby. How do you like a flyby? How do you like that? A flyby. We'll do a flyover. So, there you go. So I, th I think I can get one more bench and it'll still be wide enough to be... Well, you have this as the top. We know that's wide enough. So if the bar bottom is not wide enough, that's no big deal. As long as it's wide enough for the legs to mount to, which it will be because it only has to be like... Uh, Nine and three quarters, ten inches. So, I mean, just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And I've had really good luck at drying this stuff and it's staying really stable. Um, and as it dries, it really gets really nice and hard. So, it, uh, spin you back around here, put your hand in your face. Uh, it makes great benches and material to work with. Uh, you can make one heck of a river table out of it. Use uh take and cut that curve in that in that and match those two together. And uh that'd make a heck of a table, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, that'd be a very special table. But yeah, this is right at that point where mostly the bark comes right off, and that's the way I like it. Now, of course, I walked down there and checked it uh, before I decided to bring it up here. Uh, that's why I lay it across the top of piles. So every once in a while, while I'm out walking around, I can just check on it and uh, see where it's at. Man, that is beautiful. Yeah, that's going to make... That is going to make some really, really nice benches, so... I'm looking forward to that. Probably July. Um, I have to check the moisture on it. But uh, if I treat this with the polycryl for spaltiness, which this really doesn't need it. The outsides really aren't that soft. And then I go through and soak it down really good with the wood juice. It speed it. It speeds up the drying, but it also goes in there and replaces the water um, with a more structural molecule. Uh, and I mean, it, it does. It helps it dry pretty fast. Those cookies I did, let's see, we did the cookies, I think August, and they're two and a half inches thick, something like that, and they're done. I mean, they're ready to work with. Uh, this is amazing. Now, I've kept them in kind of controlled situation they're not outside they're in the shop but they're not near direct heat source they're kind of like hidden so that probably helps some if i had them outside in the shed somewhere that may have been different so i can uh get this uh dried up pretty nice and used for uh projects but you're not talking like these benches you're not talking about doing glue ups and stuff so if this stuff isn't down to seven or eight percent or ten percent as a bench i mean it's no big deal you know it, it, it'll dry sit there and continue to dry with the legs on it's not going to go crazy or anything so you know uh you can work with this pretty quick so <coughs> yeah sawdust in my throat we got to roll this over because i cannot cut it the way it is and it's a bit long Spin around, even though I probably still can. But let's see how it'll sit on there without spinning it around. Let's see if I can get it to stop. 
probably not. Oh my goodness, this end is eating up something horrible. And I'm looking at it, and I'm definitely not going to get um, a two and a half inch piece out of this. So let's see. Let's look at this. Let me grab the saw. It looks like the rot is somewhere right up in here. So I'll go ahead and cut it a little shorter. That'll also help me um, mill it. So I knew there's some rotten spots, but that's all right. I mean, most people wouldn't even touch this log. They'd have cut it up for firewood or rolled it over down the bank somewhere and said to heck with it. Not me. push the log down down this way I say it's gonna help me mill it too so uh, get a little more centered I still gotta take some more off it's I don't even want to bother to try to cut with it and leave some sloppy stuff in it I think I'll go back about another go back about another eight inches I think we'll be good <laughs> solid wood it's pretty wood though it's got that little rot spot in it but uh i could probably turn a bowl or something on it and get rid of that uh, let's see it's gonna want to hit but it's bowed like that that wants to poke in there and it wants to rock but if i spin it now that it's shorter i think i could spin it around we can just walk it around carefully up over that stop right there come on keep it balanced right here on the centerpiece get back up on that one i think i might just basically have the same design as i just did <laughs> now that worked yep so now i can get this stop down here and keep it down and this one's closer and i get that stop there So, you do enough of these, you'll learn. You'll learn how to put the log on there. You know how to look at it in the woods, and you'll know what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, that's going to want to go like that a little bit at first. Uh, if I can get that way just a teeny bit more. There we go. And it just barely touches here. I'm hitting right here in this corner. And I'm catching the corner of this, so should be good. So, yep. I guess we'll just start calling it cell phone Sunday. Because I'm just doing this on my cell phone. And I gotta edit a program on there and I'll just do it simple and easy. catches it but it's good enough to hold it that's fine with me all right now we're going for two and a half inches and I don't know that might be up too high that might be too high Let's see two and a half Uh, I can get right by it. I should have already known that because I just did the last one.
too bad. Not as long as that other one, but still benches, two benches in here. Two shorter ones. So. Or heck, that somebody's got a, like an entrance way or something. Now I'd probably put three legs under it if I kept it that long. Um, the legs I get off Amazon, you got different ones. You got some that are, you got to have like 12 inches. A lot of times they won't work. And they got some that you got to have about eight and a half to nine. That's right at it. Um, and they're only like maybe 16 inches at the, at the base. So it would work on this end. And it would not work on this end. It would be have them take the bark off if it was eight and a half it'd be right at the edge of the width now if you put it on a slight angle you know and you kind of lined them up at a 90 to each other it'd work you'd have just enough and as far as the weight goes the legs would hold it i would just worry about it being you know tippy um let me just put them on there it's, if it's not a Solid enough, you add another one, but then you end up with an odd set because they come in set to two. And then again, you made the other side the top because you, you don't need freaking 12 inches to sit your rear on. Um, if this was the bottom, then you could put the wider ones on it, you'd be fine because uh, it's, it's wider, it's definitely wider. So what did you think? You know, is this a ravine log or did I do right and mill it up for projects? And uh, like I say, when I'm here milling, and a lot of you who watch the channel know that I build stuff out of the stuff that I, that I mill. I'm not just selling this stuff to other people. So as an artist and a woodworker, I look at every log in a tree, whether it's upper branches or lower branches or the main trunk, as an opportunity to build something out of it. You know, I'm looking for creativity. I'm looking for, you know, using, utilizing the entire tree as uh, much as I can. You know, um, to me, that's just being a good steward of the land and of the resources and making awesome, cool projects. Because <laughs> I really don't know too many people that wouldn't think these benches would be awesome. Uh, I really don't. Uh, anyways, comments in the comment section. Give me that big thumbs up. And if you subscribe, I'm getting so close to a thousand people. Um, I'm excited because, you know, I guess I become a big boy channel when I get over a thousand people. I might get my two dollars and whatever cents it is every thousand views or something uh i'll be rich now nah, i love doing this because i love uh sharing projects with you guys and hopefully if you get a mill or you have a mill maybe i insp inspire you to do something different than you've done before with the lumber that you cut some of you might not even do stuff with the lumber you cut you might just buy it and sell it and this may inspire you to uh start using your own lumber and enjoying it and if you don't sell it to other people maybe you make projects around your house that you can pass down for generations or be proud of when people come over to your home and say hey man where'd you get that i made it i made it myself and nothing wrong with having pride in doing that so i know i absolutely love it and i love it when people tell me man you do beautiful work we love your work Look, I, of course I love that. And uh, it's part of the inspiration for why I do it. So, yeah. Let me turn this one up for you. So you can kind of see. I'd almost entertain that being one bench. Um, I haven't done any really super long ones. You know, it's not really straight enough, I guess. Like, say you want to make it like a, like a wall table. I mean, if you figured that was the plane of the wall... It would have whole, you know, there'd be spots that it wouldn't be very close to the wall. Some people would be fine with that. 
you know, or, you know, behind your couch or something. Um, because if your couch is rounded over, then you can kind of tuck it in a little bit, you know, it wouldn't be any big deal. But, uh, hey, that's what, it's, that's what we're doing it for, to have fun. Now, you know, it could be two benches or one big bench. I don't know. It's hard to say with me. It's hard to say what I decide to do with it. I won't know until I start sanding it and building it as to what I'm going to do with it. So, I don't even worry about it. This will get put somewhere in storage, and the day it's ready, then my mind will start thinking of things to do with it, or how many benches I want to make out of it, or one long bench, or maybe this one I'll cut to some neat curl right there. I may make a short bench out of that. Short bench here, short bench there. Who knows? That's the fun part. Don't want to tell you everything. Thanks for watching, guys.